If a two-stroke revs in the forest, does anyone hear? If you are spectating at Romaniacs, <laughs> you bet. This is a hard enduro event. It's so, so different, different to what you're used to. One of the toughest events in the season. It's hard to look at the trail and get smashed in the face by crunches. Four days of the hardest thing I've ever done. Two strokes were something of a dinosaur in the 21st century. But hard enduro has seen a resurgence for the smoker. It's day two of the off-road competition here at Romaniacs. And if you want to haul ass, you need to be mixing gas. You can't beat a two-stroke for tough terrain. High power to weight ratio. Less centrifugal mass, so you can throw them around more. An incredibly simple, bulletproof design. Less likely to overheat, fast, fun, and affordable. But even with modern power valves, they come on with a hit of power when ridden in anger. It takes some skill to ride fast over slippery terrain like these Romanian forests. Throttle control and clutch slipping are needed to avoid letting them get away from you. Mid-range revs, then the two-stroke becomes the mild-mannered Clark Kent of dirt bikes. Although there have been very few breakthroughs in design, tweaks over the many years have seen two-strokes become very tractable, with many claiming the modern two-stroke often feels like a four-stroke, until you really rev the tits off it. Power switches, mapping, and power valve adjustments can take the bike from wild to mild with basic adjustment. Of course, you can ride a four-stroke at hard enduros, as long as you don't mind the engine sounding like a long, wet fart all day. At low revs, the two-stroke is king. In most cases, as long as you have some throttle on, they just won't stall. Unlike a four-stroke, which often gives no warning, and suddenly your gonads are slammed into the triple clamps. The 300 two-stroke will keep grunting up a hill at just above idle as long as you can hang on and keep that throttle applied. Anyway, enough two-stroke worship. The overall results, at the end of day two, Alfredo Gomez manages to slip ahead of Romaniac's veteran, Graham Jarvis. But let's take a look at some everyday heroes from New Zealand and Australia. These crazy mofos have spent ridiculous amounts of money and time to fly over here and be beaten to a pulp. Today I watched so many of you ride into the halfway mark looking wrecked but undaunted. We salute you, you crazy dirt muppets.